Hi, Medical Wildcats. I'm Joseph Guggenheim. I'm a 1972 alum of the medical school. And this month's presentation is on Chicago's lost medical schools. The approximately 30 medical schools that uh, came and then disappeared from the Chicago scene uh, in the late 19th century and early 20th century. Last month, I talked about the three sects that many of these schools uh, were based on, uh, homeopathy, eclecticism, and physiomedicalism. This month, I will be talking about the individual schools themselves that have disappeared. In 19th century Chicago, a medical degree was often not necessary to practice medicine, and there were no licensing laws at first. Most physicians trained by apprenticeships or by reading texts. By the beginning of the Civil War, only half of the practitioners uh, ever had attended a medical college. And more than 400 medical schools opened in the United States, 39 in Illinois alone, and then many in nearby states. Rush began in 1843, and Northwestern began as the medical department of Lind University in 1859 uh, in this building, uh, you know, which would be now at the intersection of North Wacker Drive and West Wacker Drive. But at the time, most uh, schools were attempts by small groups of physicians to gain money, prestige, or both. And it was said that it was hard to find a physician in the Chicago area that did not have a medical school appointment. In 1878, the state legislature uh, required physicians to have medical degrees, but attempts to improve medical education suffered when Dr. John Rauch resigned as the secretary of the State Board of Health due to political pressure. Dr. Rauch is famous for something else. He was responsible for eliminating the practice of using the land which is now Lincoln Park as the city cemetery. He was correct in assuming that uh, the corpses could pollute the drinking water for Chicago, but he was incorrect in the reasoning. He thought that the uh, corpses uh, let off miasmas, toxic vapors uh, from the uh, uh, decaying bodies that would cause disease. This was before the germ theory was widely accepted. The weakened boards were unable to control the spread of poor quality medical schools. So many opened in the 1890s and some were nothing more than fraudulent diploma mills. Flexner's 1910 report labeled Chicago the plague spot of the country. And in 1904, graduates of the Chicago medical schools scored close to the highest failure rate on the state boards of any group in the United States. And many of these schools closed, consolidated, or affiliated with universities. 10 of the 14 medical schools uh, were controverting the law, according to the Flexner report. And most of these schools were offering, as Flexner said, the equivalent of four years of high school. Only one had been deprived of the good standing status by the State Board of Health. And if the law were administered correctly, only Northwestern, the College of Physicians and Surgeons, which became U of I, and Rush would have survived. This is a list of some of, of the fraudulent uh, medical schools in the Chicago area. You can see that the history is very sketchy on some of them. We don't know when they started, uh, when they ended, and uh, even where they were located. The second one here, Northwestern College of Midwifery, has nothing to do with our university. But many of, most of these were just simply fraudulent diploma mills. Night schools sprung up in the Chicago area. The uh, uh, aim of this was to uh, allow workers who worked full-time during the day to be able to uh, uh, obtain a medical degree at night. And there were three of them. Reliance opened in 1907, later absorbed by Bennett, and then finally became uh, part of Loyola University Medical School in 1915, a regular medical school. Jenner began in 1892 and later became Chicago Medical School. This is not Chicago Medical College, which became Northwestern. Chicago Medical School degrees were only recognized by two states in the United States until they affiliated with Mount Sinai Hospital in 1948. Harvey Medical College opened in 1891 as a night school, and we don't really know when it closed, sometime in the early 20th century. Harvey was organized in 1891 to allow students to obtain a degree while engaged in other work. And unlike many of the regular medical schools, including Northwestern at the time, it was co-ed. Classes ran from 7 to 10 p.m. and there were four nine-month terms. 
The first class was in 1895, and there were many transfers attracted by the fact that they could obtain a medical degree while still working at a full-time job. The school moved to the intersection of South Halstead and West Van Buren and opened one-stop medical care. They had the medical college, the hospital, the free dispensary, the nursing school, the dime drugstore, and the outpatient clinical, outpatient clinic all under one roof. And then they moved to uh, South Clark Street in 1896. The class size gradually increased from nine to more than 250 in the first eight years, but they were subject to criticism. And you can see in this editorial from JAMA, which is a response to the criticism, uh, that uh, they had been accused of having facilities of the most limited kind and that their school was a diploma mill. As I said, the school was closed sometime in the early 20th century. There were three sects that opened medical schools in the Chicago area, and then they were uh, gradually closed. The uh, first I will discuss is homeopathy. This originated uh, by a German physician, Samuel Hahnemann, uh, and it was based on uh, several tenets. The first being that like cures like. He said that a drug which causes specific symptoms in a well person should be used to cure the same symptoms in an unwell person. I've never figured that one out. And also he believed in the law of infinitesimals and said that a drug's potency is enhanced by a series of dilutions. He thought serial dilutions and then shaking or what he called percussions uh, would increase the potency of a drug. Basically he was creating placebos. At one point he said diseases were caused by coffee but later he retracted this. In 1857, a group of the homeopathic physicians in the Chicago area obtained uh, clinical uh, privileges at the new city hospital, which after the Civil War became the county, Cook County Hospital. Interestingly, homeopathy was uh, popular among the wealthy and educated people. It is said that Abraham Lincoln believed in homeopathy. He was instrumental in getting Hahnemann's uh, charter for his medical school, uh, so we think that he probably followed homeopathy. Orrington Lunt, one of the founders of our university, uh, was said to believe in homeopathy, as well as William Wrigley Jr., the original owner of the Chicago Cubs. Chicago had several homeopathic medical schools, which appeared on the scene and then disappeared. Uh, home Chicago homeopathic started in 1876 and was later absorbed by Hahnemann. Hahnemann Medical College and Hospital of Chicago began earlier in 1859 and lasted until 1922. In 1921, they attempted to merge with Northwestern, but uh, our school uh, politely uh, uh, declined. There were several other homeopathic schools, uh, several that were declared fraudulent, not in good standing with the State Board of Health. Uh, Herring was absorbed by Dunham, but by 1905, all these homeopathic medical schools in Chicago had produced more homeopathic physicians than any other city in the country. Hahnemann uh, was the first. It was chartered in 1855 with the help of Abraham Lincoln. It opened on Cottage Grove Avenue on the south side. Uh, it opened a new campus in uh, 1866, uh, just south of what is now the Loop at 1237 State, established a hospital on Groveland Avenue on the west side. And it was uh, progressive in the fact that it began admitting women in 1871, unlike Northwestern. By 1872, it had 76 students and six women. The uh, uh, enrollment ballooned uh, in 1889 to 312 with a graduating class uh, numbering somewhere in the 70s. New Hahnemann opened in 1893 and lasted until its demise in 1922. In 1913, Hahnemann uh, increased the program to four years uh, of medical school, eight months each, uh, trying to follow the regular medical schools. In 1916, they increased entrance requirements to two years of college. The school also founded Hahnemann Junior College and Bob Parazzo uh, University, or established a relationship with Bob Parazzo University in uh, Indiana in an attempt uh, to uh, be a source of uh, first year medical students. But the uh, facilities were described as a dingy sort of place. And there was only one lecture room, 12 by 20 feet. The dissecting room was next to the lecture room, causing bad odors uh, in the lecture room. And the dispensary or outpatient clinic 
could only accommodate three or four patients at a time. But this was not a problem because that was all that came. Flexner described the building as wretchedly dirty and noted only a single lab. The adjacent hospital had 60 beds, but did not offer any clinical experience to the students. And they, in OB, they were only allowed to look on. And although supported by many prominent Chicagoans, homeopathy was declining. As I said, Hahnemann attempted to merge with Northwestern, uh, but uh, the med, our med school declined. Hahnemann organized a football team uh, in 1895. They played Lake Forest College and uh, our dental school, which is uh, shown on the right in 1906 photograph. They organized a conference in 1896 of nearby professional schools, including Northwestern Law and other local medical and dental schools. They played the University of Chicago in 1896 and lost 34 to nothing and played Northwestern in 1898 and lost 22 to six. The uh, uh, second sect, uh, which uh, was organized was physiomedicalism. And this was a branch of the, of, uh, the sect uh, begun by Samuel Thompson, uh, a uh, uh, uneducated farmer in the uh, 18th century uh, who uh, uh, started a system of six drugs uh, as his, uh, the basis of his practice. Uh, he did not believe in uh, medical schools, but thought that uh, doctors or practitioners uh, would be a better description. I should be educated by observation only. Uh, his uh, repertoire included uh, six uh, drugs and a, a book, which you could buy for $20. And then you were a Thompsonian practitioner. The physiomedicalist uh, believed in uh, botanic uh, cures also, uh, but they started a curriculum similar to the regular medical schools. They believed in vitalism, which was a spirit or force that differentiated the animate from the inanimate. And an illness occurred when this force is blocked. And the way to cure it was to relieve the blockage using botanic remedies, which enhanced the body's own healing force or internal physician. Many physicians embraced a part of vitalism and opposed mechanism, which compared the body to a machine. There were several physiomedical schools in the Chicago area, uh, the first being Chicago College of Medicine and Surgery, Physiomedical, which had no graduates. Uh, it merged uh, uh, with another school, uh, the College of Medicine and Surgery, Physiomedical, which is, was established in 1885, uh, was absorbed by uh, uh, another physiomedical school and later became College of Medicine and Surgery, Physiomedical. Uh, College of Medicine and Surgery Physiomedical was the last physiomedical school in operation in the US. And on paper, the requirements matched many regular medical schools, but the graduates were definitely inferior. The school was condemned by the Flexner Report and the AMA Council on Medical Education. And in 1911, the College of uh, Medicine and Surgery Physiomedical uh, was taken over by an eclectic medical school. The third sect uh, that established medical schools in Chicago was the eclectic branch. This was derived from the Greek word meaning to choose from. And the eclectic physicians claimed they were free to choose whatever uh, system was found to be beneficial to patients and reserved uh, the, uh, the, and said that the patient and the physician had the right to private judgment on all scientific matters. They also used botanic, res uh, botanic remedies. The curriculum uh, was said to be similar to regular medical schools with the addition of the study of botanics. And there were two eclectic medical schools in the Chicago area, American and Bennett. Bennett was founded in 1868 on uh, Kinsey Avenue near LaSalle. And as you can see, they moved many times. Uh, they moved to the Southeast corner of state in 22nd in 1871 after the 1871 fire. Interestingly, uh, our medical school, uh, uh, which at the time was called Chicago Medical College, uh, was at the uh, corner of State and 22nd Street, but left that corner uh, in 1869, just before the fire. Like the uh, homeopathy physicians, uh, the eclectic physicians were also gained, also allowed to practice at Cook County Hospital. And the Flexner Report said that Bennett was uh, entrance requirements were nominal. The facilities were in wretched condition, 
clinic experience was utterly inadequate and the uh, school was basically a for-profit venture uh, to uh, owned by the dean. Flexner was not known for mincing words. Loyola University uh, established a regular medical school and assumed complete control in 1915. The American College of Medicine and Surgery was founded in 1901 uh, as the Chicago Eclectic Medical College uh, and changed their name. They advertised as a not a large school, but a good one. And the capitalization is theirs. They purchased the former home of uh, Northwestern Medical College, part of the Northwestern system. And if you've seen a picture of the uh, uh, Women's Medical College, you'll recognize this building. The Women's Medical College uh, picture is usually taken from the other end of the street, but it is the same building. The Flexner report said that the only uh, requirement for entrance to uh, ACMS was a high school diploma. In 1917, they merged with Loyola to become a regular medical school. But uh, ACMS uh, tried playing football. In 1904, they played University of Michigan and lost 72 to nothing. The game was stopped eight and a half minutes into the second half. And the medics, uh, as the team was known, had negative yardage. But they didn't seem to learn their lesson because in 1905, they played Notre Dame and lost 142 to nothing. Notre Dame scored 27 touchdowns, 10 touchdowns in an eight minute period. And this 142 points was the most scored by any school in the history of American college football. Uh, as you can see uh, on the, uh, uh, in the excerpt from the student magazine in 1905, uh, Notre Dame said they could have scored a whole lot more points if they had just hadn't missed so many extra points. The game was stopped 33 minutes into the, uh, from the beginning so that the doctors could eat before catching their train. So in, in summary, these medical schools uh, came and went uh, largely due to the increasing acceptance of the, uh, of the germ theory and with advances in physiology and bac uh, bacteriology uh, and pharmacology and uh, uh, disappeared into oblivion. And with this 142 to nothing drubbing of uh, the medical school, medical students learned that they uh, uh, probably should not be competing in uh, college football and uh, the uh, rivalry between college, colleges and medical schools also disappeared into oblivion. Let's get together again next month virtually uh, for uh, the uh, uh, July presentation. In the meantime, stay healthy and stay connected. And I look forward to uh, getting together again next month.